tonight, heat wave deaths. At least 41 people have died in India's eastern Odishi due to a severe heat wave. Malawi weepy killed. Malawi's vice president Solis Chilima dies in plane crash. Rebuilding Ukraine. Ukraine gathers assistance to protect and reconstruct its cities. Aggressive shark. Bull shark circles around a jet skier near shore. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Other Than Our World News Tonight. Good evening and thank you for tuning in tonight on World News. I'm your host, Akwal Qureshi. We have lots of fresh updates to bring to you and we begin in India. A heat wave in India has caused at least 41 deaths on Odeshi this summer, including eight over the past weekend. Health officials reported 159 suspected sunstrokes deaths in Odeshi with 41 confirmed. Delhi recorded its highest ever temperature at 49.9 degrees Celsius and nationwide as well. There have been 25,000 heat strokes cases and 56 deaths from March to May. A heat wave in India has led to at least 41 deaths in the eastern state of Odisha this summer, with at least eight deaths over the past weekend. Health officials there said that a total of 159 suspected sunstroke deaths have been reported just in Odisha this summer, saying that in 41 of those cases, sunstroke was confirmed as the cause of death. India's capital region, Delhi, has already recorded its highest ever temperature at 49.9 degrees Celsius this summer and the country has seen some 25,000 cases and 56 fatalities from suspected heat strokes from March to May, according to a local media source. And moving on to the U.S. Hunter Biden, uh, the son of the U.S. President Joe Biden was found guilty on all three charges in a federal gun trial yesterday, making him the first child of the sitting U.S. President to receive a criminal conviction. The jury in Biden's hometown of Wilmington, Delaware, found the 54-year-old guilty after three hours of deliberation. Biden Jr., who has admitted to a crack cocaine addiction in the past, faced one charge of possessing a gun while using or under addiction to drugs and two charges related to lying about the use of narcotics on a federal background check. The charges stem from the purchase of a Colt Cobra Special Revolver at the Delaware gun shop in October 2018. He's facing up to 25 years in prison and a fine of up to $750,000, but is expected to receive far less as a first-time offender. Sentencing is set to take place within 120 days of the verdict. According to Malawi's President Lazarus Chakvera, Malawi's Vice President Salos Chilav and nine others were killed in a military plane crash. The aircraft had gone missing on Monday and was later found crashed. Chakura confirmed in a national address on Tuesday that the aircraft had been found with no survivors and all aboard had been killed, calling the crash a terrible tragedy. The aircraft went missing off the radar on Monday, en route to Mzuzu Airport in the north of the country Justice from the capital Lilongwe and, uh, before it was found in a fog-cloaked forest following day. Chilima was travelling to represent the government at a former cabinet minister's funeral. Malawi will observe 21 days of mourning for Chilima and the other victims from June 11th to July 1st. South Korea's Navy for the first time has held publicly open training drills showcasing its 3,000-ton submarine Anmu. South Korean forces and the 3,000-ton submarine Anmu get ready to launch a torpedo attack against a hypothetical North Korean submarine, which is intruding on the de facto maritime border. <laughs> South Korea's Navy conducted the training on Tuesday with the Ammu in waters off the port city of Busan. The training involves striking an enemy submarine and ship with torpedoes, as well as ground-based enemy targets using submarine-launched ballistic missiles. 
The drill was aimed at enhancing detection and striking capabilities amid escalating threats from North Korea, especially with continued trash balloon deliveries and missile launches. All crew members of the Anmu are at the highest level of combat readiness. If the enemy provokes us, we will destroy and punish them underwater immediately, strongly, and until the end. The Anmu is a core asset of the South's Kill Chain preemptive strike system, a pillar of the three-axis defense system designed to deter North Korean attacks. It's armed with torpedoes, mines, and guided missiles, and equipped with vertical launching tubes for SLBMs to strike ground targets. The submarine also features the latest noise reduction technologies and uses an air-independent propulsion system that helps it survive longer underwater. It's the second of three Tosan Anchango class 3,000-ton submarines, which are capable of carrying 50 crew members. Tuesday's training with the Ammu was the first to be open to the public, involving the Navy's 3,000-ton class submarine. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un conveyed a message to President Vladimir Putin stating that their country is an invincible comrade in arms with Russia. This message comes amid speculations about Putin's upcoming visit to Pyongyang. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un called his country an invincible ally of Russia in state media Tuesday, while rumors swirl that President Vladimir Putin is set to visit. Marking Russia's National Day, Kim said his meeting with Putin last year strengthened their century-old strategic relationship. The message followed a report that Putin will soon visit North Korea and Vietnam, but no date has been confirmed. Kim visited Russia last September, touring the Vostochny Cosmodrome spaceport in the Russian Far East, where Putin promised assistance in satellite construction. Tuesday's state media report also had Kim praising Russia for achieving success in building a strong nation, despite facing pressures from, quote, hostile forces. In the past year, Pyongyang and Moscow have boosted diplomatic and security ties and traded delegations in recent months. A North Korean public security delegation was scheduled to visit Russia this week. Officials in Washington and Seoul have accused North Korea of exchanging weapons for use in Russia's conflict in Ukraine in exchange for aid with its nuclear and missile programs. A senior Hamas official stated that the Palestinian militant group has agreed to UN-backed ceasefire resolutions and is prepared to discuss the specifics this U.S. hailed this development as a hopeful sign. A senior Hamas official said on Tuesday the Palestinian militant group had accepted a United Nations-backed ceasefire resolution and is ready to negotiate details, a move the U.S. called a hopeful sign. Qatari and Egyptian mediators said they had received a formal reply from Hamas to the truce proposal, and Hamas and its ally, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, issued a joint statement on Tuesday expressing, quote, readiness to positively reach a deal to end the war in Gaza. The UN Security Council approved U.S. President Joe Biden's proposal for a truce on Monday. Biden's proposal would pause fighting in the Gaza Strip and facilitate the return of Israelis held hostage by Hamas, ultimately leading to an end to the war. We have the prospect of an immediate uh, ceasefire, building toward an enduring one, and uh, tremendous relief for people in Gaza. In a visit to Tel Aviv on Tuesday, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken responded to Hamas's statement with measured optimism. Well, I say it is a hopeful sign, uh, just as the um, statement that they issued after the president made his proposal 10 days ago it was hopeful, but it's not dispositive. Both Israel and Hamas suggested on Tuesday the plan fit their clashing goals, raising doubt whether any genuine headway toward a deal had been made. The war began when Hamas-led Palestinian militants stormed into southern Israel from Gaza on October 7th killing more than 1,200 people and seizing more than 250 as hostages, according to Israeli tallies. Israel's retaliatory air and ground onslaught in Gaza has killed more than 37,000 Palestinians. The Gaza Health Ministry said on Tuesday, Israeli strikes have reduced most of the densely populated coastal enclave to wasteland. Blinken traveled from Israel to neighboring Jordan for a summit on the humanitarian response for Gaza's 2.3 million residents, most of whom are now homeless. The American diplomat announced more than $400 million in assistance for Palestinians. Let's take a short commercial break and more world news on the other side.
Welcome back. Kyiv, its allies relied private companies to put their money into rebuilding Ukraine at a conference in Berlin dedicated to mobilizing international support for the post-war reconstruction. Ukraine and its allies drummed up support to protect Ukrainian cities from Russian missiles at an event in Berlin on Tuesday, urging international businesses to put their faith and billions of dollars into post-war reconstruction. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said Russia had already wiped out enough energy infrastructure to power the cities of Berlin and Munich combined. He was hoping to come away from the conference with pledges of billions of euros for defense and agreements on building a new and more modern energy system. This meeting in itself is already a result, because it is very difficult not to lose allies and partner countries. And uniting countries who are partners and non-partners is a difficult mission in itself for Ukraine, when the war has been going on for months. Since March, Russia's campaign of aerial bombardment has inflicted heavy damage to generating capacity and blackouts are having to be scheduled across Ukraine. Kiev hopes the recovery conference will cement its credentials as a future member of the European Union. It is trying to prove it's worthy of huge injections of reconstruction financing, even as Russian forces continue to make slow advances in Ukraine's east. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz cited World Bank estimates that Ukraine could need $500 billion over a decade. He added companies had to be offered a business case for investing. He also talked up Ukraine's potential in sectors including renewables, IT and pharmaceuticals. The reconstruction of the country will require massive investment. This will not be possible without private capital. As a reminder, we are talking about the reconstruction of a future member state of the European Union. Scholz added that Germany was sending more air defense systems, missiles and munitions to bolster the capital Kiev's defenses against a barrage of Russian attacks on cities. The mayor of Ukraine's second city, Kharkiv, said Western weapons and the permission to use them to strike targets just inside Russia had helped to restore calm. Around one point European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen announced agreements with banks worth $1.5 billion to help attract private investment for Ukraine. <laughs> Zelensky also addressed the German parliament during his visit, where his speech was boycotted by two parties, including the far-right alternative for Germany, whose support surged in European elections last weekend. Eight suspects from Tajikistan were suspected ties to ISIS were detained in Los Angeles, Philadelphia and New York City after crossing the southern borders into the U.S. last year and this year. Tonight, eight migrants from Central Asia who entered the United States illegally through the southern border are in federal custody over suspected ties to the terror group ISIS. The individuals from the former Soviet Republic of Tajikistan came to the U.S. since the end of last year. They were vetted at the time. Law enforcement sources told us authorities then uncovered information raising suspicions about possible affiliations with ISIS. At least some of the individuals were monitored and eventually all were detained in New York, Los Angeles and Philadelphia. The FBI has specifically warned Islamist radicals might try to access the United States from the Mexican border. There is a particular network where some of the overseas facilitators of the smuggling network have ISIS ties uh, that we're very concerned about. Earlier this year, Russia arrested migrants from Tajikistan in connection with an attack on a concert hall outside Moscow that killed scores of people. Despite the EU's anti-subsidy investigation into Chinese-made electrical vehicles, Chinese automakers are determined to expand in Europe and integrate into local markets, um, as stated by the China Passenger Car Association. Chinese automakers aren't turning away from Europe. That's according to a leading auto group on Tuesday. The China Passenger Car Association, or CPCA, said the country's vehicle makers will unswervingly develop in Europe, adding they will integrate into local markets. He made the comments despite the EU launching an anti-subsidy investigation into Chinese-made electric vehicles. 
The EU alleges China's car makers benefit unfairly from state subsidies and accuses them of dumping excess production on Europe. China denies both charges. This week, the EU is expected to announce tariffs it plans to impose on Chinese EVs. The CPCA's comments also came while announcing a rare drop in Chinese car exports for May. Data showed exports of new energy vehicles fell 4% year-on-year in May and were down 18.8% from the previous month. Overall, passenger vehicle exports fell 9% from a record high in April. Domestic vehicle sales were down 2.2% following a bigger decline in April. It's a sign weak demand is becoming entrenched in the world's biggest auto market. On the road to the White House tonight, the Trump campaign has reacted to conviction of Hunter Biden calling to the trial nothing more than a distraction. The campaign national press secretary released a statement saying this trial has been nothing more than a distraction from the real crimes of the Biden crime family, which has ranked in its tens of millions of dollars from China, Russia and Ukraine. There is no evidence that Joe Biden or any of his family members have received large sums of money from China, Russia or Ukraine or that he is accepted of any payment from government access. An impeachment inquiry in the US House of Representatives has also not found any evidence tying the president to his son's business dealings. Former South African President Jacob Zuma's political party announced they filed an application with the Constitutional Court to stop the first parliament sitting. Zuma's MK party claims there was vote rigging in last month's election. Former South African President Jacob Zuma's political party is trying to block parliament's first sitting since last month's election. Umkonto Wesizwe, or MK, said on Tuesday it had filed an application to that effect in the Constitutional Court. <laughs> South Africa's newly elected National Assembly is due to convene on Friday. For the swearing-in of lawmakers and the elections of its Speaker and Deputy Speaker, as well as the country's President. But MK, which came a surprisingly strong third in the May 29th election, has alleged vote rigging took place and threatened to boycott Parliament. The Independent Electoral Commission and other parties have said the election was free and fair. South Africa also does not have a history of significant voter fraud. The election saw the African National Congress, Zuma's long-time political home, lose its parliamentary majority for the first time since it came to power at the end of apartheid three decades ago. The ANC is now negotiating with a broad range of potential partners as it tries to set up a government of national unity. But Zuma, who was forced to quit as president in 2018 after a series of scandals, openly loathes his successor, Cyril Ramaphosa, who is expected to remain as president. Zuma has said MK will not work with the ANC of Ramaphosa. Let's go in for a short commercial break and more world news right after this. Welcome back. While jet skiing with his son off Grayton Beach in Florida, Pandela, Andrew Caddy had a close encounter with a bull shark. This incident occurred just a few miles away from where three swimmers were attacked. Experts speculate that these recent shark encounters might be linked to bait fish being nearer to shore, where swimmers and boaters also are frequently available at. A terrifying encounter as a shark goes after jet skiers. Watch as the bull shark menacingly circles one jet skier. Then, out of nowhere, he launches an attack. This is an aggressive shark, dude. This shark isn't done yet. The beast keeps circling, setting his sights on another jet skier. Oh my God. It happened just a few miles from where three swimmers were attacked over the weekend. 
45 year old Elizabeth Foley had to have part of her arm amputated, and a 15 year old girl lost her hand and leg. We asked Joseph Ayulo, curator and co founder at the Long Island Aquarium, whether it's conceivable that the same rogue shark is responsible for all these attacks. I don't think you could rule out that it was just one individual cruising that area, but to say definitively either way, that would just be a guess. Well, that is all the stories we have to report to you tonight on World News. Tune in again tomorrow for more key updates from across the globe. Stay tuned as we will be back in just a short moment with Nightly Business Report. Thank you for watching and good night.